All right, you guys, get ready for today's episode. It is really, really powerful. I knew my guest was good and I didn't know it was going to be this good. So here you go. We just finished recording. What I need you to do is get a notepad, get a pen. You are going to want to take notes today. Trust me. Trust me, what we talk about today could potentially revolutionize what you're doing at your shop. I'm not even kidding you. The stuff we talk about today is so powerful, so many good takeaways. I am pumped for you guys to hear it. Uh, Yeah, I'm going to be getting a lot of comments on this one. Stay tuned because we have Robert Snook from Business Success Global. Welcome to Body Bangin', your podcast for all things body. Auto body, that is. And now, introducing Body Bangin's host, Mickey Woods of Mickey Woods Marketing. Mickey is a former auto collision center owner and is now a marketing and business development expert to shops across the globe. Hello, and welcome to today's episode of the Body Bangin' Podcast. This podcast is growing like wildfire, and it's because of you. Thank you so much for listening. And hey, if this is your first time, welcome. I am so happy to have you. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you subscribe. You've heard me say it before. Hit that notification bell so you can be alerted when a new episode drops. Or if you're listening on Apple Spot, Apple Podcast. <laughs> Apple Podcasts or Spotify. You can also follow the podcast and you'll be alerted when a new one drops, which is typically every two weeks. So today on the podcast, we are talking about something really cool. And actually, I found my guest on LinkedIn. He made a post and I liked it. I thought, oh, what a great thing he was presenting. I think it was like an IBIS or something. I don't remember. You'll have to remind me, Robert. Uh, And I loved the post and I thought, huh, this is really interesting. So here he is. We got him on the show today. Hello, Robert Snook. <laughs> uh, hi, Mickey. Hi, everyone. How are you? Yes, I am great. Thank you. So Robert works with Business Success Global. And so meaning he's working with collision industry. I mean, I'm sure you work with other industries as well. I know you have in the past. Uh, and you were speaking at a collision conference about being present and relevant because in our industry, as we all know, we're not a food chain where everybody needs to eat three times a day. We are a body shop. You only need a shop when you need a shop. So he was speaking to a large group of people. Where were you at anyway? Do you remember on the post that I had commented on? Yes, I was doing a keynote presentation at the Body Shop News International Collision Congress in Sydney. So Ah. I saw one the following that. So. Yes, so cool. So today we're going to be talking about basically how do you increase your revenue is really the gist of it. And I love how Robert phrased it is like, you know, we're all fishing in this pond. So how can you maximize the amount of fish that you are getting on your line? And I'm saying it totally different than he did. His was more succinct than mine. <laughs> uh, but basically how to how to be relevant, how to be out there. So we have there are three pieces to that, Robert, that you speak on, right? There are. There, there's there, these whole connected chain of events that explain the functionality of our business. And we call that the business revenue stream. Mm. And you see all of these things link up to the thing before and after it to form this flowing stream. And if you don't remove the blockages in any stream, then obviously it's going to back up behind that. Right. And all of a sudden in Body Shop, you find this million pound, million dollar opportunity at the top becomes this sort of $100,000 headache at the end of the pipeline because of all the blockages. Now, Mm. there are some six distinctly different things that the stars do that what we call the hamsters don't do. And what we're going to do today, Mickey, is talk about what those differences are. What have the stars started doing that the hamsters don't do? Mm. And what is it the stars have stopped doing, more importantly, that the hamsters are still doing? Ah, Great point. I love that. Okay, so share with us one of those. Let's kick us off here. Okay, so you see, this is all about the fact that money follows energy. So what mm. you need to do is focus your energy in the right areas. And it's understanding the difference, Nikki, between working in context and working in content. Uh, as you said earlier, you want to get more fish on your line if you're fishing in the pool. 
Right. But just fishing for longer hours isn't going to make any difference if you're using the wrong bait. True. So what is it, again, that you can do to work in context? So when we talk about our business revenue stream, we talk about the very source of that stream being your culture, your vision, and your intent as a business. Mm -hmm. That is where the stream starts to flow. And then underneath that, of course, we have the next steps that make all the difference. They are your product, your positioning, and your channels, your routes to your A-grade customer marketplace. And it is that that sets the stars apart from the hamsters, because you see, those things are all about growth and where tomorrow's profit's going to come from. Whereas the hamsters are caught in this trap of revenue. They're all about things like sales, getting the referral, the notification, raising an estimate, getting authority. They're on about the body shop operation to repair the car and then delivering that car back to the customer. And of course, regardless of what business you are and where you are, there's always this a bunch of other stuff behind the admin, the emails, the meetings, the phone calls, all the stuff you don't get paid for. Right. Because this, this is a huge part of the body shop's business, Mickey. You know, when they raise an estimate to repair a car, no one's paying them for all this other stuff. Right. They're paying them for the technician's hours on the car to repair it. Right. All the other things that need doing, no one pays you for that. Good point. So if you find a way to minimize that, maximize your revenue, and attract more A-grade customers into your business, you're going to get more fish on your line than the guy next door. True. I love that. So you talked about product as the first one. So wouldn't the product be the same for everybody? Well, this is, again, one of the common myths, Mickey. Mm. Everyone has this misconception, apart from the stars, that our product is accident repair, collision repair, and it's not. Mm. And this is the damaging power of, so what? Mm. My insurance company sent me to you. They said you were good. You've repaired my car, okay? So what? Mm. So what we do with standards and extras is we, we use a specific framework, which anyone's listening to this can draw up as they're listening. So if you imagine a noughts and crosses board, two vertical lines, two horizontal lines, in the left-hand middle one, if you put the word do in there and then underneath in the bottom left-hand corner, don't do, and then the middle box at the top put standards and the top right-hand box extras. Now, it's important to understand, Mickey, the difference between what that standards column looks like and what the extras column looks like. So if you do all the standard things that they expect, so what? <laughs> I'm sure it's going to be to you. You said you were good on your website. You've repaired my car, okay. You delivered it back on time. Mm. So what? Nothing's wrong, but so what? Right. It's a neutral on the yeah. impact on relationship. Yes. If you don't do any of those standard expectations, though, it's clearly a negative on the relationship straight away. Yes. So in that standards column, it's just a matter of time before you drop the ball, isn't it? We always get sickness, parts, delays, back orders, whatever the issue is that we manage. And as soon as that happens, that customer has gone below so what, to a negative position. Mm. Whereas if you look at the extras column on the right-hand side, if you do extras, extras being things that they don't know you did, they didn't ask for, they didn't expect, it's clearly a huge positive in the relationship. Whereas right. if you don't do the extras in the bottom right-hand corner, it's still negative, it's still neutral, but it's not negative. Right. You know, they, mm. they didn't know you did it, they didn't expect it, they didn't ask for it, mm -hmm. and you didn't do it. So they right. don't even. Right. So there are no positives in doing the standard things and no negatives in building extras into your customer journey. Mm. And that is where all the opportunity is. Think about mm. it, Mickey, in your life. Let's just take you as an example. When was the last time you were buying something in a shop or a store somewhere where somebody did something extra for you that you didn't ask for, you didn't expect, was probably no benefit to them, it was purely out of extra bit of service? Oh, I love it. Pardon? I loved it. It was yeah, great. I mean, you love it. It feels great. You feel really special, don't you? Yes. And they tell you once. How many people do you tell afterwards? Tens yeah. of thousands. Right, right, right. Especially someone like yourself. So <laughs> it's important to understand that if you build these extras into the customer journey that are sustainable and repeatable things, mm. you create this new value product for the mm -hmm. customer. And they pay you back by going back outside of your business and telling all of their friends and family about that. Yes. And over a period of time, you build this unpaid sales force of ambassadors for your business, mm -hmm. telling other A-grade customers what a great product you have. And guess what? 
none of that is about actually repairing the car. Mm, very good point. Very good point. So the product then is the service. Yeah, it's how you build that extra little bit of shine and polish into the service. I'll give you a real life example from a couple of weeks ago. We talked earlier about the event in Sydney that I spoke yeah. at. Um, I was in Heathrow Airport in London. So this is British Airways um, home airport in our capital city. Okay. And we were queuing to get on the, the gate to a, a, the Qantas flight. The clients have paid for the flight and chosen Qantas. They're in Australia. And um, as we queued up at the gate, I noticed this pile of British Airways signage on the floor while 480 competitors' customers walked past wondering what that was all about. So that's one point. Second point, when I was on the plane, um, I said to the steward, um, it's okay to have a drink after dinner. It's gone on flight. I'd like to watch a film. I haven't seen the trolley come around again. Is it okay to have another drink or more drinks? Right. And he looked, he looked me square in the eye, the kid. He said, mate, you ping it, I'll bring it. <laughs> now he could have said yes of course sir, no problem but just by putting a bit of extra into that phrase right. that, that i remember yes yes what, he brought me a couple more drinks and then on the third drink a couple of hours later he said um we're going to be bringing the the, the meal around soon for all he said and um he said i thought you would like um this little um packet of crackers he said i've noticed you've been ordering shiraz wine so these crackers go brilliantly with this with wine. I thought it would just be a nice lead-in to a dinner in about 20 minutes' time. Wow. Well, Thank you, I'll, sir. He'll say, yeah, but you, you get that. This is cost. This was yeah. economy class. Oh. Economy wow. Class. No frills. Back of the plane. Economy <laughs> class. Wow. It, Impressive. It was just two things. Now, the, the key point, Mickey, how much did that cost? Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. How long did it take? Moments. And how, again, how many people are I now telling about it? <laughs> right. Now thousands. <laughs> so, so these things really show that there is a definite correlation between small, simple, sustainable things, meaning more, more value for the customer. If you go and say, thank you so much for reading your current for an estimate today. Here's a free Rolex watch. Mm -hmm. so it's clearly a ridiculous, <laughs> unrelated right. gift. Right. But if you get something simple, plain and repeatable, I'll give you a couple of body shop examples. Most people, when they arrive at a successful busy body shop, uh, they struggle to park. Mm. Now, online, you can buy a, a waterproof uh, parking sign that you can put on the wall at the back of the parking bay. They cost $20 or something. And then all you do is you get a piece of A4 paper, create a simple, single PowerPoint slide master. They just have your body shop logo, welcome. And then underneath, you just input the message. So, um, you could have welcome, Mr. Smith, um, could please come into your estimate. Mm. And then you put that right by the door. Now, when he arrives down this commercial area, he sees this very big, busy body shop at the end of the road, cars everywhere. He gets towards the door thinking, where am I going to park? Where am I going to park? And all of a sudden, he sees this empty parking bay with his name on it saying, good morning, looking forward to meeting you, or some personal sign. I love that. That costs you $20, one off. Mm -hmm. And then less than less than one penny in English money um, <sighs> to do it every time. Right. How much, how much does it cost? And yet, when I've seen body shops do that, Mickey, um, what they reported down the line was about 50% of the customers that parked in that bay, before they walked into the body shop, they would get out of the car. <laughs> I was going to say. This, circulate it on social media <laughs> saying, this is amazing mm. at Bob's Body Shop. Love how that. Much, how much is the return on investment? Oh, $20 huge. plus pence over a year. Huge. So really the product does not service its experience. No, because the product is is what you do. It's so what? You know, right. you said you are accident repair center limited. I've had an accident. I've come to you, you've repaired my car. Right. I'm satisfied. Yeah, but yeah. I'm not loyal. Mm. And it is the extras that create the loyalty. Yeah. The satisfied customer who gets their car repaired nice on time, perfectly correct, will still have another accident in the future and just go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. He might have changed his car. He might have changed his insurance company. True. But he, he's satisfied. He'll just buy somewhere else next time. The loyal customer, mm. because of the value you've added with your extras, will come back to you regardless of the car and regardless of the insurance company. True. 
is how you build your business mm. and catch more fish. Get customers, add value, add more customers to them, make them happy as well. Mm, I love that. I hope everybody listened to that. What a great way. I've had that happen to me before. I think it was like at a Four Seasons or something. And my name was on a sign when I showed up and I was like, oh my goodness. And I did the same thing and I took a picture. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, it's it's real. It's a real thing. So for the listeners back here, I guess the key thing is implementation, right? What can yes. they do with that idea? So what I would suggest they do is get a piece of paper, create five columns on it. Mm. In the first column, list all the things, all the steps that are in that accident repair process, that customer journey. Mm-hmm. Okay. Then in the next column, against each one of those steps, list what the customer's expectation is. Mm. What would they expect from a garage, from a body shop, from a repair center? Not on a good day or a bad day, just normal, standard, minimum expectation. Right, okay? right. And then in the third column, what do you actually really deliver to your customers today? Mm. Not on a good day or a bad day. What is your normal right. step? Okay. Right. That leaves you the two important ones, four and five. So in column four, what is tomorrow's extra? What is the thing you can do? Is it look at the parking sign idea? Mm-hmm. Is it something else? For example, another example quickly from body shops, mm-hmm. tea and biscuits, okay? Quite mm-hmm. often in, in some actual business, you'll see a little plate with, with some biscuits for customers. Right. It, have a rule where you are never allowed to have anything but an overflowing plate. <laughs> never leave one packet of biscuits because if you walk into a, a store somewhere, Nikki, and you see a plate with one little packet of biscuits, what do you immediately think about that packet that's left? What's wrong with it? <laughs> They're yeah. so horrible. They're so horrible. Not even the staff pinch them, right? That's how bad they are. So, um, you know, it's probably old. It's probably stale. All the other flavors were better than that one. Mm. But of course, if you just had an accident, what you want is a bit of sympathy, drink, yes. and a bit of blood sugar, right? Mm. And by having a biscuit and not having a coffee machine, making a customer a cup of tea, okay, then that helps a whole conversation start that you don't have if they've got their back to you getting a coffee out of the machine. Good point. So again, you say the rental on the machine, you engage your customer, and then all of a sudden you've got people saying, well, tell me what happened then. Oh, well, I, this happened and this happened and there was the impact. Oh, so you, did you skid into the curb? Yes. Okay, mm. well, if you notice the car driving, yes, it is noticing a bit diff- driving a bit differently since. So you're getting all of this valuable information to understand mm. what happened in the accident and how you need to repair the car. Mm. So what is tomorrow's extra in that call for? And then lastly, what is the extra in the future? Because this is another key point. Key. Mm. Tomorrow's, um, pardon, today's extra is tomorrow's standard. Right. Once the customer starts to expect it and it becomes the normal, that mm. moves left into that standard middle column. Mm. So you always need to think about what is the next extra. Once the competitors have caught up with us and they're copying what we do, what do yes. we do to stay ahead? Right. Great point. So the shops that you're working with, do you see that they are implementing this successfully and seeing huge results from it? I would think so. Yes, definitely. I mean, what we see again is the importance of working in context, Mickey, that revenue chain, revenue stream framework I explained. What we find is that those businesses who what we call hamster businesses, they're red, blue, they operate in that blue today's profit revenue stream or red administration. Right. field. They just go you know, like round and round and round. And when you say yeah. to them, do you ever arrive at work with a, a list in your mind or on a piece of paper what you're going to do? And all of a sudden it's four o'clock and you've not done the point one yet. And they say, yeah, how do you know that? <laughs> so you say, well, ever go in and just think, right, I'm just going to quit my emails. And all of a sudden it's lunchtime. <laughs> so, oh, yeah, this is me yeah. every day, Robert. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, this is, you yeah. see. Whereas, you know, you're focused on the hamster. You're, you're looking at increasing your right. content. Mm. Not, as I said at the start, working in context, setting yourself apart, mm. putting a different bait on your book and catching bigger, better fish more often. Right. I love that. Very, very, very applicable. I think everybody listening, put your thinking caps on. I challenge you to think about what you can be doing to differentiate yourself to and to to do the extra, like Robert said. What can you be doing? He gave you a couple great examples but this could be a great opportunity, I think, Robert, for shops to sit with their teams and brainstorm. It, it makes a great team effort, you know, a great yeah. team 
thing because you get buy-in, you get engagement. Right. And they personally see the benefit. They see the look on that customer's yeah. face. Yeah. Whereas if it just drops something that drops into the company bank account, they don't always see it. Right. Yeah. I, I love it. I love it for so many reasons. Okay, what else you got for us? This is great. Well, like I said, next on from product in that revenue stream is positioning. This is the second of the three growth elements that can drive your growth. So positioning is all about understanding that in the whole customer repair journey, there are key moments that matter, Mickey. Mm. And the wake-up point about that is 80% of your successful outcome relies on those few moments that will only last a few seconds each Mm. in a journey that might take one week, two weeks, three yeah. months. All of your success comes from being on point in those moments that matter. So it's about um, really understanding that you need to be famous for something. It's no good just saying yes to everybody with a pulse and a wallet. Right? Mm. That's not going to happen. You'll just right. become the commodity vanilla brand, whatever industry you're in. Mm. This is about understanding for your market positioning what are the moments that matter? When do they show up? Mm. And what would what we call the Everest brand do? Mm. Now, the Everest brand is where you, when you put a person on the spot or a person that is on the spot, they would all instantly give you the same answer. So I'll demonstrate, I'll demonstrate to you, Nikki. What's the highest mountain in the world? Mount Everest. If I ask a thousand people, what's the highest mountain in the world? Pretty sure 999 or a thousand would know it was Everest. Right. What's the second highest mountain in the world? Huh. I have no idea. <laughs> no. Already starting, already starting to see the difference, right? So the, the second highest mountain in the world is K2. Okay. And about 20%, about 200 people in every thousand would know the answer. Not all mm. say get that genre. Mm. So what's the third highest? Oh, gosh. If I didn't know the second, <laughs> me knowing the third ain't going to happen. <laughs> there is part of the point. It's almost like we rehearsed it. Or something else. So the third highest mountain in the world is a catchily named Kanchenjunga. Mm. Now, out of a thousand people, less than 20 would know that. So isn't it interesting? You know, there is, not in fairness to a mountain, there's not much more it can do to be noticeable to the public than the eight and a half thousand meters of rock sticking out of the ground. Right, right. But the trouble is, when you stand back from the Himalaya and you look from a distance, it's all pretty much the same. Everest is just this little slightly higher point Mm. in the middle. And it looks like that for body shops from the customer's perspective. So you have to to understand those moments and really stand out Mm. in those moments that matter. And that's what will help you to become famous for what you want to deliver, what you can do better than anybody else that you have a passion for doing that drives the economics of your business, helps you catch more fish. Mm. So the action point for the the people watching for this one, Mickey, again, is nice and straightforward, nice and easy to do. Just get another piece of paper, draw a simple cross in the middle of the page. At the top of the vertical axis, put expensive. At the bottom, put cheap. On the horizontal axis, on the left-hand side, put product. And on the right-hand side, put relationship. And then plot where you want your business to be, what you want to be famous for. There are Mm. no wrong answers. It's just where you want to be, your vision of your business, if you remember the head of your revenue stream. And then plot where your customers are. So to give you a couple of Mm. examples to help people fill that out, Nikki, if you look at something like the top left-hand corner, expensive product position businesses, You probably think of people like banks and accountants and Mm. legal services, Mm. very much process audit driven businesses. If you're bottom left, product and cheap, Mm. you're very much looking at disposable commodity type products, aren't you? Or something like that. A black bin bag is a black bin bag is a black bin bag. Yeah, right. If you're bottom right, relationship and cheap, then perhaps you're looking at something like the low cost airlines, for example. Mm. You know, they very much buy on relationship those customers, but they know they're buying a cheaper product than Mm -hmm. maybe one of the the, the significant carriers out there. Whereas top right, expensive and relationship, very much lifestyle type of brands. Mm. Apple maybe. Who Mm. goes into an Apple shop expecting a bargain? But you you go in in there because you want to and you're pre-sold before you walk in the door. Mm. So so very much the positioning of those businesses. So it's plot where you want to be, 
plot where your competitors are, mm. and then identify the moments of matter for the customer and understand what would the Everest brand do in those moments that matter? How can we position our business so that when they go back out after being completely wowed by what we've done, and someone says, oh, I'm not having a good day, I just had an accident in my car. Oh, you want to go to this guy. This guy is the one you want to go to. He did this and this for me. Mm. And it is those moments out of the whole week, day, month, quarter's journey that they've been through. Mm. It is those few moments that matter that is the key to your success and where you get the bite on your hook, not the fish mm. on the hook. Right. I'm going to interrupt this podcast for just one quick second because a lot of people wonder, Mickey, what is it that you even do <laughs> besides host a podcast? Well, I do marketing. And really the biggest thing that I do is help you drive more traffic to your business. And not even just more traffic, but consistent traffic to your business. As a former shop owner, I know how important that is. So if that's something you're interested in, or you just want to talk about marketing or developing your business in general, feel free to reach out. You can visit collisioncentermarketing.com. There's a calendar on there and you can just book a time that works for you and we'll set up a phone call. Or you can email or call me and my notes are down in the description of this episode. But I hope to hear from you. I'd love to help you build your business. But in the meantime, you better get back to this podcast because it's really good. So just to recap, for those of you filling out your paper, because <laughs> I know there are people that listen. Some people are going to listen to this and be like, oh, that's a nice concept. And then we've got the people that have you are. I already know. There you are. You got your paper. You got your pen. And they're writing it out. So up in the top, we've got expensive. Yeah, the cross, It's a cross shape on your piece of paper. On the top, you've got yes. expensive. On the bottom, you've got cheap. On the yes. left, you have product. And on the yes. right, we have relationship. Yes. And what Robert's challenging you to do is where you are on that graph, plot where you think you fall. What blend of those things are you? Because you, you can't really be all four. You can't be cheap and expensive. Uh, so... And then also, then where are your competitors? Which is very interesting as well. And the point is, you see, Mickey, if, for argument's sake, um, your eight nearest competitors were all in the same quadrant. Mm -hmm. Now, you can either compete with that right. or diversify and own one of those other mm -hmm. quadrants, be famous for that other quadrant. Mm -hmm. There isn't a right or wrong, but you build right. your business model around that position. Right. And like I said, identify the moments of matter that, that subconsciously and consciously sell your position to the customer, just in the way you service them and look after them, the culture of your business again. Yeah, I I think that's an awesome idea. It's a great perspective to step out of the day-to-day -day of what we do to really evaluate what we're doing. Yeah. Does that make sense? Look, <laughs> absolutely. Look, when did your great idea come while you were sat at your desk with a mountain of paperwork and a screen full of... Yes. Things? Your great ideas don't show up at those times. Correct. Getting your staff away from those desks to a neutral venue mm -hmm. and just doing a little bit of open plan thinking could actually give you a you know $100,000 idea. Yeah. It's just the knowledge is in your team. They've already identified mm. subconsciously some of these opportunities, but no one has joined it all up and connected it up to prioritize what you do at those times, in those moments, to your A-grade customer. That no is one's a... boxed it up, put a red bow on it, yeah. and put it to the customer. They just carry out the function right. because they're worried about moving on to more content, right? more repairs. Great, really great point. I have noticed that in my... Well, in my body shop when I owned my shop and more specifically in my marketing company recently, like... Having a team meeting, they see things. My team members see things oftentimes that I don't see because yes. we are all caught to some degree with some blinders on in the position that we're working with. And our team members allow us and bring things to light that when they bring it to light, you're like, oh yeah, duh, oftentimes. Yeah. This is the thing. It's like, this is so obvious. Why did I not think of this before? Why did I not see this before? And it's because again, working content, not concept. And mm -hmm. a classic way to explain that, if anyone's not really sure what I'm getting at, is if I said to you, Nikki, I've got three fruit here, an orange, an apple, and a banana, which is the best? Apple. Yeah, and you, there's no real grounds for it. It's just your personal <laughs> right, preference. Right, right. Like, that's just what it is. But if I, whereas we're choosing about the content, three types of fruit. 
Whereas if I said to you, Mickey, I've got three fruit here, orange, apple, and banana, and I want the one with the most vitamin C, which one is it? Oh, orange. Even no. if you don't like orange, orange is the, the only and obvious answer, isn't it? Right, right. Because the context is these fruit are here for us to harvest vitamin mm-hmm. C. Otherwise, it's just fruit. Right, so right. Mm, love that. Robert, you're making us think. I love it. <laughs> I love the challenge. <laughs> Uh, when you're when you're a business coach and consultant, uh, Mickey, the answers are not as important as the questions we ask. If we ask the right questions and make people think, they come up with the right answers. And as you said, very often they were in the team anyway. It's right. just asking the right question to draw that information out mm. so that they get that aha moment. You know, yeah, get it back together. I love that. I love that. So I know we have a third that you had mentioned. So we have so far we have um, product and position. Yeah. And now we've got the, our third. Third part of the growth, the, the, the growth part of revenue stream is channels. So this is your, yeah. your routes to market. How you get to your A-grade customers. Mm. Okay? Because that's what you want. You want more of your high profit, low maintenance, A-grade customers. Yeah. So this is about understanding that you're going to need to work with partners mm. that can help you access those customers that are already part of their life. That is much easier for you to do them to go hard selling one by one to those customers okay True. so for a channel to work with you we've got to understand what their fears and benefits are mm. because if you don't address those fears and you don't communicate the value and the benefits they are not going to give you the support and you'll end up wasting a load of effort for very little reward from that channel part. Mm. Mm-hmm. so when, when you talk to body shops around the world uh, and they, they list about their problems and how that's working for them. It very often comes down to five common fears, the five why nots that stop this being a success. Hmm. And the first one of those is trust. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, they don't trust you, the right. process. Second one is control. They mm-hmm. have a feeling that they're out of control. They like some form of control. Three is quality, the quality assurance. Mm-hmm. They don't build the quality assurance. Four is consistency. They, they want the same result every time and they've not had that before. And five is time, the fear that, mm. that this will take up too much time or cost them time. Makes sense. But you need to address those five fears properly. So again, an action point on that one for, for the people watching and listening is this. List those five fears mm-hmm. and then list, identify alongside those what you can do to be more trustable. Mm. How can you show them that they are retaining some control when you are servicing their customer? This was mm-hmm. already their customer. They've referred them to you. They want some control. Thank you very much. Mm-hmm. So how can you ensure they, they retain some control? And what about quality? How can you assure them of quality and address those quality fears? Mm-hmm. How, will you, how will you map out an account management plan so that that channel part is managed like a revenue stream that it deserves to be managed like? Right. And lastly, how can you show them that you will take care of this? It's a done for you solution. It won't need their time. All you need to do is X and we will take care of the rest. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, so how you can do that? And the fears are really around the fact that they very often from previous body shop partners in, in that role or in a previous career with another business, they've had a bad experience. Right. Their, their expectation is actually quite low. Yes, and yes. A lot of the body shops, believe it or not, work hard to, to not even meet that. So mm-hmm. if you can deliver that on a good day, but that every day, then all you've got to do is communicate that gap between their expectation and what you can deliver every day. Right. Address those fears. It's a bit like three dots, Mickey. I'll explain it this way. Three dots. So there's three dots, right? Okay. The first one, uh, when you walk up to it, it always wags its tail. It makes nice snuffling noises. You go up to it, it rubs itself around your legs, it licks your hand, it sits and it gives you its paw. <laughs> right? yeah. And then there's this dog in the middle that when you walk up to it, sometimes it runs around your legs, it, it wags its tail, it licks your hand. Sometimes it seems to bite you for absolutely no reason whatsoever. <laughs> okay. <All right? laughs> yeah. And the third dog in the row, this one, whenever you walk up to it, always bites you for no reason whatsoever, mm. which is the scary one. Mm-hmm. Which of those three dogs is the scariest one? Uh, honestly, the second. Yes, the you second You never know dog. what you're going to get. <laughs> of course it is. You, you always go up to the first one because it licks your hand and holds its paw. Right. The first one, the, the middle one, bought, 
beat you once, you know, beat you before. I'm not going back there because I don't know what I'm going to get the next time. Yeah. The third one, always ignore it. So the danger never comes. <laughs> right. Right. It's the middle dog that is the fear. Mm. So when you're thinking about your channel partner, just don't be the middle dog. Be the first mm. dog. Um, so that's the fear. So on the, the benefit side, the why is they will do it. Again, it always distills down to five core things, Mickey. And the first one is revenue. There's going to be some form of sales and profit growth from partnering with you. Mm -hmm. okay. Second one is loyalty. Now, you being loyal to them, them being loyal to you, but also you helping the loyalty between them and their customer. Mm. It's a bit like in our business, you know, in, in accident repair against service and maintenance, for example, when you had your car serviced, it was driving perfectly well when you took it back to the dealership for the annual service. Um, they service it, it drives perfectly well when you drive it home, it's just your wallet is $500 lighter. <laughs> right. It's no discernible difference. But with accident repair, you've suddenly got a car that's, you know, two foot shorter than it was this morning. Mm. And you've got all these appointments, you've got the children to take to school. And, and all of these things. So there's a, a massive opportunity to create loyalty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you look after that customer in that moment that matters and all the little moments after that in the journey, then the loyalty between that in insurance company, that broker, or that car dealership and that customer mm -hmm. will be absolutely massive thanks to what you've done. Right. They will just have more and more confidence to refer more and more customers to True. you. Um, then it's referrals. How can you create referrals for them? So, mm -hmm. for example, if you work with a local car dealer, for example, if you're mm -hmm. an OEM approved body shop independent, yeah. then that local dealership does not sell every brand of car in their market area. Right. They've been bought in hand, they've been bought off the internet, they've been bought from a variety of sources. So, if that car comes to you and you can, as duty of care, identify if it needs any servicing or if there's any outstanding recalls or anything like that from the previous owner and then you could obviously contact the customer and say we've identified on our diagnostic system that there's this problem it's an outstanding recall would you like me to arrange to get that fixed with your local dealer for you mm. in case you having another job we can take care of all of it during this visit and of course what you're doing is putting that dealer in contact with that customer right and you know the customer's thinking great the dealer's got a lead and things like that. Yes. There's also the other uh, often quoted stat about one in four cars being sold within six months of a structure accident. Now, mm. when you order your parts from your 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 parts supplier, mm -hmm. um, let's just say in this example, it's a car dealership. Mm -hmm. The parts manager is not going to say to the salesperson, you might want to make a note to call this customer in five months' time because our body shop or this body shop would just approve a big basket of structural parts. Right. So by Putting a process in place with, with, with the dealership to say, look, you need to make sure that if this order's come in and it's your customer, you are you know, saying, are you okay? Are you all right? Notice this. Right. So these sort of things can just, again, um, help create opportunities and show a caring mm. relationship side from the dealership to their customer. Great idea. I love that. And the fourth and five, four is about investment. So it's either saving them investing. In other words, if you don't do it for properly, they're going to have to go to a body shop and do it themselves. Right. Or it's creating some sort of return from them in terms of perhaps increased parts and, and other sales, service sales mm -hmm. uh, from the relationship with you. And the last one, of course, is protection. What they really want, a huge benefit to them, is protection in all forms in terms of their customer relationship, um, their integrity as a business and all right. of these things. Right. So revenue, loyalty, referrals investment, saving, or return, and protection. And similar to the action point on fears, list them out and then identify what can you do to create more revenue that you're not doing now? Mm. What can you do to create more loyalty or communicate how you will do that right. better than you're doing now? And once you've done that, you've got 10 points, some identified solutions, and that will take you a good year probably to implement all of those things where they're right. habitual and consistent. Mm. Just imagine where you'll be against your competitors in a year's time. Yeah. You'll, start, you'll start noticing in two months, three months. And when, by the time you get to the year, before they've started to notice, they will never, ever catch up and close the gap. <laughs> That's right. Well, and you and you made a great point that I I hope you as the listener heard. So there's the piece of the puzzle that is our guest, 
that's our customer. And then there's also the referrals that are coming in, our partners, like the yes. dealerships and, or the insurance broker, whoever, however your business model is set up. And being that trust piece, being the quality, piece, all of the things that Robert just talked about, taking those into account, not just for the car in your drive, like there's so much more to it than that. And, and very similar to what Robert talked about in the beginning, coming from a marketing background, we can shout out your name all day long. It is even more so powerful when you have other people. So whether that's your own guests, that's your dealership partners, your broker, you know, whoever. So everything that he's talking about from a marketing standpoint, building your business, I preach all the time and I appre- I really appreciate you saying it and the the breakdown. So if you mm-hmm. missed any of that, rewind and chart that out for yourself because like he said, if you start now, your competitors will never catch up. How cool is that? (laughs) What takes you a year to get to, they can't fast forward the time and bypass you and get ahead of you. Um, What what, what that sort of low-grade competitor mindset will do is they'll look to copy a website, something like that. Yes, right. But can't see all of these other things going on through the process. They're one-to-one customer contact moments that matter. So right. by doing all of those, the chances of them learning that and copying that right. it would literally take them years. And by then, mm-hmm. the market's involved, you've evolved, yeah. and you're now onto your, as I said, your new extras. And, and you've obviously got the whole backlog of evidence about the value that you're adding in that channel. Well, and one thing we hear a lot of shops say is how busy they are. So anytime you introduce something, as you know, as a coach, Robert... And a consultant, I don't have the time to do anything else. Yeah. Uh, How much do you hear that? If I had a dollar. Um, (laughs) Right. So a couple couple of things I can just add to that, because you're absolutely spot on, Mickey. First thing was, um, it's not the starting that's important, it's the stopping. Mm. Uh, We got a client uh, who, after we worked with them, they went on to have five record years in a row in the last five years. Wow. And they, at the end of every accounting year, they send me their, their, their little message that says, just had our accounts filed and another record year. Thank you very much. And one year, one of the directors put the little note on the bottom and they said, um, Robert, do you know you were right? The more we said no, the busier we got and the better the business was. Wow. The stopping is more important than the starting. Mm. If, you, if you just keep starting more things, you'll end up letting everybody down. Right. And working eight, you know, eight, 12, 14, 16 hour days is not that much fun. So <laughs> right. think about it in this context again, Nikki. Stop spending time and start investing your time. Mm. If you if you've got 220 days a year in your business, eight, 10, 12 hours a day, how would you invest those approximately 2,000 hours for the best return? Because it is not about trying to do more and more cars. Right. And the way we really focus body shops on that, uh, Mickey, is to get them again thinking about it in a different context. Mm. So when I first say to a body shop client that I'm meeting perhaps for the first time, what's the, the capacity of your business? What's the capacity of your body shop? They'll generally come up with an answer that says how many repairs they do, how many hours they sell, how many staff they employ, right, right. or something like that. And I would ask them how they're doing against that their capacity, and they'll they'll give me an answer, generally up in the ninety percent, because everywhere's rammed full with vehicles, right? Right. And everyone looks busy. So if I said to them, okay, well, how about if the way that we look at a business's capacity is different? Mm. Now, the way we would suggest that your true capacity is is the maximum amount of profit you can make from the resources that are available to your business. So when mm. you look at the, all the resources you have available to you, mm. the meterage of the building, the skills of the staff, the equipment, the channels, the routes to market, the location, all of these things, when you put all of that into one place, what should that business be generating as a profit with all of those valuable resources available to it? Mm. And then they, they say, this, is, this percent net profit. Example. Right. Okay, so what are you actually making? Mm. And then they give us a totally different percentage. Right. And of course, we say to them, well, 
So it's not actually 95% of your capacity, is it? That's just 95% of the amount of work you can do. Right. In actual fact, you're only 25% or 30% or 50% of your profit capacity, which ultimately is why you're in business. Stop mm-hmm. operating your business and start running it. Mm-hmm. You know, work in context. Stop doing things that are stopping you be successful and stop being too busy to make money. Mm-hmm. Beautifully said. Beautifully said. And for those of you where it went over your head the first time, <laughs> he said it. Where there's more power in stopping than starting is one of the most powerful things I've heard for a long time. Seriously. Because, and if you miss the reasoning is, so we want to start by doing new things and all these things. And what Robert is saying is you can't, we cannot continue to take on, well, let's start doing this. Let's start doing that. Let's start doing this. Something's got to come off the plate because we can't do, we can't be all things to all people. So it's what is the most powerful he's saying is look at what you're doing and weed out, stop doing all the busy work and start doing the things that are moving the needle. Yes. And that is, as a business owner myself, is the, the issue. And I see it in all shops that I work with, in my own business. And I think, and all of the analogies you gave today were awesome. That dog one was great. I've never heard anything like it before, but that was amazing. (laughs) Yes. It's, it's, um, It's often not as complicated as we think it is, Mickey. Very often, right. a business just needs a bit of a nudge in the right direction of uh, being asked the right questions. Right. And they come different answers, but the light bulb comes on and they start feeling empowered to take the action. Right. But as Henry Ford famously said all those years ago, if I'd have asked them, they'd have asked for a faster horse. <laughs> right. Yes. <laughs> so if you are hearing this, and I know you guys love it, loved it because I've loved it. It's been amazing. All of Robert's information is in the show notes below. If you want to connect with Robert and have him assist you in your shop, do when you're working with your clients, Robert, are you working with them via Zoom? Because I know typically you're, uh, um, you don't reside in the US. Uh, and most people listening are in the US. I'm in Canada. How would you assist shops in America, for example? Well, two, in two ways. Um, firstly, we're in a hybrid world, Mickey. So right. in person, we're online. Yeah. And we have those things. I'm here in, in the studio now. So yes. we, we're all set up for, for online coaching and support. Um, right. Secondly, uh, in person, if that's preferred, I'm a licensed business coach for Cherlaws. So we're a global coaching organization. Mm. We have boots on the ground all over the world. So awesome. great works and things I talked to you about, my colleague coaches, they can present those to a business every bit the same as I would. Right. Um, so again, it provides this scalability and local ability mm-hmm. that a, a one-man coaching company doesn't normally have. Right. Yeah. Well, I challenge you guys to go through, if you didn't do it while you were listening, take some time, separate yourself from your daily minutia and your stacks of ROs, step away Like Robert said, hugely important to get into a neutral environment. So try to get away from your desk and your office. Uh, You know, go wherever you got to go. Go to Starbucks if you need to, if if the house is too busy. Listen to this again, get out paper and work on it or get together with your team. Take them out for a dinner or a picnic at the park or something like that where you can all sit down, even if it's in the conference room. Um, and work through these together. This could be such a great, great team building culture experience for you and your shop. I mean, if everybody wants to move the needle, really. I mean, really, business owners, we don't want to keep treading water. And the stuff Robert just gave you is like gold. People pay big bucks for this stuff, folks. And he's just giving it out, giving it out to us. So thank you so much, Robert. So appreciate you. No problem. The more you give, Mickey, the more you get back. That's that's yes. the unwritten rule of life. So I hope people listening do implement it. In our experience, there is no difference between high and low performers other than implementation. Mm. Everything else is just an excuse. You are filled with these today. Oh, my goodness. It's like these golden quotes from Robert Snook. <laughs> I love it. 
Okay, well, again, Robert's details are below so you can contact him and his team if you want to get some assistance in your shop. If you have any questions for him, he's an awesome guy, obviously, you see. So again, he's with Business Success Global. Thank you guys for listening. I appreciate your patronage to the show. If you love this episode, make sure you leave a comment. And uh, thank you, Robert, for spending your time and joining us today. Uh, Thanks, Vicky. Thanks, everyone. Yes, and we will see you next time on the next episode of Body Bangin'. Bye. If you enjoyed today's show, make sure you hit the subscribe button. We have some incredible topics and guests coming your way you will not want to miss. If you are watching on YouTube and don't want to miss the latest and greatest, you'll want to hit the bell after subscribing so you will get a pop-up each time a video podcast goes live. To our devoted fans, would you mind paying it forward and sharing this little gem with someone else you think may benefit from it? Much love from all of us here at Body Bangin', all things Autobody.